Hey folks, welcome to EV Flux, and today we'll be having an in-depth look at the ID3's uh, heating and ventilation system. Let's have a look at the internals of the climate control system for the ID3 and see what makes it different from all the other cars out there. So um, some of the highlights of the ID3's HVAC system is, I mean, that we'll cover in this uh, five minute video is there's like, there's about 12 air vents and uh, air sources of air in the car. Um, the ID3 uses CO2 um, or R744 refrigerant, which is very different from the majority of the other cars out there. And we'll discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of CO2 Mac. The ID3 also has two independent cooling loops, one for the battery and one for the um, cabin. Um, despite having two independent loops, it does have a high, um, highly efficient heat exchanger between the two. But we'll discuss some of the advantages of having um, independent cooling loops rather than a single loop for the cabin versus battery heating or cooling. The ID3 also has, of course, as an option, the heat pump. And but the, while the heat pump maybe um, is optional, you also have a PTC heater that I think is standard across all ID3s. Cool. So let's start by having a look at some of the internals of the ID3. So looking at the interior layout of the HVAC system, um, let's start with um, the parts labeled one, two, and three. So that is um, one, two, and three are um, the vents right across the front. They are the adjustable vents um, that you can kind of point to your face or wherever um, and adjustable by front passengers. What was Excuse me. What was interesting about the front vents is that they the parts catalog does show that they are available um, with a chrome trim option. Now it's not clear which version of the ID3 can be ordered with a chrome trim around the air vents, but it's it's available as an option in the parts catalog. In addition to the um, air vents uh, across the front, there are also air vents for both the door uh, both. For your door window so these air vents labeled five and six um, in the diagram are there so that you can you don't get any fog build up uh, for your side view mirrors so you can see clearly out of that window um, and then we of course have the windshield um, exhaust right in the center that blows um, hot air or, um, on your windshield front passengers also have um, footwell air vents um, part A7 and 8, so they both blow blow um, hot or cold air um, into the front front passenger footwell. But for rear passengers, there, there are no um, adjustable air vents. Rear passenger um, air vents are only footwell air, air ducts. So the heating um, and cooling for rear passengers is either you need to kind of depend on the air, uh, air that is coming out of the two central front uh, front uh, air vents or you can you depend on the footwell um, air duct so there will be hot or cold air blowing into the rear passengers footwells so that is kind of how it's all laid out with the inside the id3 um, let's have a before we go into what's under the hood let's watch this video um, that i think we've all seen a hundred times of the id3's construction and i'll kind of pause it and call out some of the key uh, key things that we're interested in so here you see some dude um, hooking some stuff up so here as the id3 is rolling up uh, right in the middle here you have the compressor unit so that is kind of the core um, component of the ID3's HVAC system. The compressor is shared between both the cabin cooling loop and the uh, battery, and it, it's also used uh, as the heat. Excuse me. It's also used as the heat heat. Um, it's also used as a compressor for the battery um, uh, battery heating or cooling loop. So um, while the compressor is in the middle, here you see all the different pipes for the different refrigerant lines and um, the radiator and all the other pieces, of course, are missing in this diagram. Um, this video then cuts to the inside and looking at the inside again, um, some, uh, well, just, let's wait for the video to just go forward just a bit. Uh, right, so here you can see that in the front, we have the air vents as we know. And then these, this is usually hidden, right? Um, these two tunnels are the air vents for the rear passengers. So they go through the kind of center console portion and uh, blow air into the rear passenger footwell. So 
that's kind of uh, that kind of helps us visualize uh, what the um, what we expect under the hood. So if we actually look at the part numbers and how things are connected, so like uh, like we saw in the picture there, the core is a compressor. The compressor um, costs around thirteen thousand uh, Norwegian kroner, um, and it sits on a bra um, it sits on a bracket that is damped and actually has some sound isolation on it, which is I think quite useful. Um, one of the common complaints for that I've heard about the 2015 e-Golf is that the compressor is quite loud, so that in winter it sounds it, it the car actually makes a lot of noise as the heat pump's working. So that's uh, hopefully they'd address some of those things and uh, improve the sound isolation on the compressor. But uh, yeah, to be seen. But I do see that they have some bushings and sound isolation on the parts. So. Other than the, the compressor, let's look at how the compressor is hooked up to the rest of the unit. So you see here the compressor is is hooked up with the um, to the condenser and the dryer. Um, but the this diagram, the one thing I just want to call out here is um, item number forty. So here you have a heat exchanger uh, with four inlets, and these four in uh, these four inlets are to tie in to the two different cooling loops or what it says there, two different loops, right? So the, both the, the ba battery loop and the climate or the cabin loop, both loops um, can share heat through this heat exchanger. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and then if you go and look at so the refrigerant circuit, so there's a couple of, you know, few bits and bobs there. So we have the gas cooler, then we have the compressor, there's lots of sensors and pieces like that. So all these parts and bolts and stuff all have a part number. I've only summarized some of the key part numbers, but you can see like some of those, some, the average price for a sensor is about 2000 Norwegian Krona. In addition to kind of the two cooling loops, uh, the, the uh, ID3 also has a PTC heater. And this is a, uh, this is the kind of a more advanced version of a resistive heater that provides backup heating into the ID3 um, when you want to, um, well, before while the heat pumps kicking in or the or it's such a low temperature that the heat can, can't work. So if you look through the top actually here of a picture of the ID3, this is what you'll see when you open the bonnet, and this part component here is your distribution box, and if you open that as per diagram eight, um, you should be able to take out the filter seven. And actually, you should be even uh, able to get to some of the other filters in here. Um, this is probably one of the few um, user serviceable parts of the ID3, where you know, um, if you think your air conditioning unit is not working to its optimal performance, you could probably just you can open that up, take out um, the air filter um, illustration part number seven, blow it with a compressor or with some canned air, and just you know put it back in. That's something you can service. Um, but most things, uh, as you can see, are hard to get to. And then, in, in addition, we have this box here sits underneath the in, in the intake box, and this is the part that controls uh, controls which section gets you know how much hot air should go to the left, how much warm air, uh, cold air needs to go to the right, how much hot air to send to the back, and so on. So this is kind of the distribution box that sits underneath the intake component. And in the front here, you have the two. Um, the two radiators and the fan. The one thing uh, I did want to call out is that the ID3 has uses CO2 or R744 refrigerant, and um, it's not apparent what the main advantages are, so I thought I'd quickly state them. So, um, CO2 as a refrigerant, by definition, has a global warming potential of one. This is much better than traditional uh, refrigerants, but right now most companies, the most modern refrigerant that's being used across, let's say the uh, e Nero or the uh, Polestar to uh, Polestar is R1234YF. R1234YF does is is has a global warming potential of around one as well, so it's just as environmentally friendly. However, um, 1234YF is not suited. Um, for heat pumps below minus five degrees Celsius, whereas R seven forty four or CO two 
if you use CO2 as a refrigerant, it operates at a much higher temperature, uh, sorry, much higher pressure, which allows it to function at temperatures below minus five degrees. So while people say that, hey, heat pumps are useful, but under minus five degrees, you still need a resistive heater. Yes, that is true. However, you need to take into consideration what type of refrigerant and how the heat pump is actually designed. So I think there's a couple of graphs for floating around. I believe the ID3's heat pump um, is uh, claims to work at temperatures well below minus five degrees. Um, of course, it's hard to compare. It's not just about the refrigerant. It's about the whole system. But on the whole, I uh, the, the, the literature seems to infer that... Um, R744 is better for heat pumps that want to work at colder temperatures. Um, the other advantage of the, the current setup that the VW uh, ID3 is using um, is that R744 and CO2 is actually great for harvesting the excess heat from the battery and put it and pumping that into the cabin. So even if you don't necessarily have a heat pump, you don't have to have the heat pump. Even without the heat pump, the fact that you have a heat exchanger between the two loops means that you are still able to pump heat from the battery um, from the battery into the cabin or even vice versa. The heat pump really comes into um, enhancing that at where, where the differential isn't so high, right? So um, if it's uh, if it's cold outside, if it's relatively cold outside and you want the cabin to get warmer, you need a heat pump to do that. If the heat pump, um, uh, if yeah, yeah, you need a heat pump to do that. Cool. So uh, that was a quick summary of the um, of the layout of the ID3's aircon system. Please head over to evflux.pro uh, and read the article, which has more details into all the bits that were covered in this video. Thank you very much. See you guys later.